throws it. He drives the missile. Oh! Lucas Seward, and he drains the three. Well, Colorado's hitting some shots, and it's unbelievable for a six-foot guard. But he's strong, Ted. Seward drains another. And Colorado has its first lead. That was some images from the Buffs basketball game of the Bay Area against the Cal Golden Bears last week. And hi, everybody. Voice of the Buffs, Mark Johnson. Welcome to the Buffalo Stampede. Head coach Tad Boyle joining us here for a couple of minutes. Buffs drop a couple of ball games in the Bay Area. First time they've been swept this season over the weekend uh, on the road. Uh, tough road trip. How would you categorize it? Yeah, dis disappointing, uh, frustrating, a uh, lot, lot of adjectives, you know, that go with losing. And, and uh, you know, we're just not uh, – we're not the team that we were maybe three or four weeks ago. Uh, for some reason, we've lost our defensive edge, Mark. You know, over the last eight games, uh, I think five of the halves, we've given up over 50% mm. in terms of field goal percentage. So we're just not taking any pride in our defensive uh, effort, our defensive uh, game plans and executions. And, and that's disappointing because that's how you have to win games. Um, you know, it, on the flip side, of the in the same eight halves in the last four games, we've shot over 50% only twice. So, uh, when you're not scoring the ball, you better be stopping somebody from scoring the ball, and we're not doing that right now. Uh, uh, doesn't matter who we're playing. I have to think as well. This time of year, a lot of times it's not a physical thing; it's not an X's and O's thing. So this is a psychological thing you're dealing with. Yeah, right? I think so, and it's an effort thing. And part of the part of the mental, it, it is part mental, and part of the mental is understanding, you know, uh, scouting reports, understanding that. When you're guarding a driver, he's going to put the ball on the floor and drive at you. you. Your job is to keep him in front of you. Part of the job is uh, you're guarding a driver coming off a ball screen. You're supposed to go under that ball screen and meet him on the other side because he's not going to shoot it. Yet we go over the top of him time and time again and let those guys get downhill. I mean, uh, Stanford, uh, you know, two drivers score 31 points on us. All, right. uh, one uh, guy hit one three, but the, of the 31, 28 of them were – we're at the rim or in the paint. And, you know, those are the things from a mental standpoint and partly a, an effort standpoint is a combination of both. But really, to me, it gets down to pride. I mean, sure. that's what it, that's really what it gets down to this time of year is the teams that want it more, the teams that uh, are tough enough, they get it done. Teams that don't, don't. Buffaloes, you've got one more regular season game this coming weekend. They'll wrap up the regular campaign at Salt Lake City versus Utah. Hey, last weekend here at the University of Colorado, we had the annual Inclusive Summit, and a great Buffalo was there to kick things off. This is really important to us in athletics. Being inclusive and diverse is one of our huge priorities in our department. We embrace being one of the most diverse units on campus. And our challenge is we want to be the best in the state and the country in how we develop our diversity and inclusion excellence. I don't know, today I guess they're calling it invisible disability, but for me, I had a learning disability. I didn't really want to say I had a learning disability. No kid wants to say that. Kids are mean, you know, let, let's face it. Kids are mean, they don't understand. You know, so I got to college and uh, I was going to be quiet about it. And uh, I was just going to go on. I started struggling in school and I was embarrassed. You know, I started to accept, you know, what I had. And the thing is, everybody thinks that it's like a disease or something like that. No, it's just, you need extra help. That's what I needed. I needed more help, extra time, and just somebody there that, that really believed in me. You get to college, you can get lost. You know, I was able to get confidence in myself and I was able to be okay with who I am. Uh, in college, you're trying to find your identity as a person anyway, as a, as a man or a woman. And by that, you got to be able to accept everything that, that, that comes with you. Always good to see Philip Lindsay back on campus here at the Inclusive Summit here at the University of Colorado. We'll continue with head coach Tad Boyle for a couple of minutes. All right, Buffs have dropped three in a row. This is really a gut check time now. You guys got one regular season game left and then jump into postseason play. It is a gut check time. And, you know, we just, we just saw Philip. I mean, boy, I'd love to have a chance to coach him. Oh. I mean, and that's, yeah. you know, he's got what I consider the heart of a Buffalo. And, and that's what we need to find right now. We, we've and, and this team has it. We've shown it, obviously. Uh, uh, we're 21 and nine. It hasn't been an atrocious year, but we, we've hit a little bit of adversity here. We have to find that Philip Lindsay heart, that Philip Lindsay toughness. That right, right now, the last three games we haven't played with, and and uh, and that's disappointing. So, 
uh, great to see Phillip back on campus. You've got a guy that's got that kind of heart in McKinley Wright, obviously. And then you had a line the other day, I thought, it was after the Cal game, where you said, uh, we need less admiration and more emulation yeah. in terms of not just sitting back and expecting Ken to do everything, but let's play as hard as he's been playing. Absolutely. That guy brings it every single night. Uh, he doesn't always play well, uh, but but you know the effort is there, the intensity is there, the uh, the toughness and competitiveness. He does have the heart of a Buffalo. We've got other guys. Evan Batty has shown that uh, certainly at times, and and but we need we need everybody in that locker room, everybody in that uniform to to uh, play the same way. And right now we're not, and we better find it quick. I asked you the other day about you know stretch run of the season, looking for seedings, and you said to me, "We're not worried about seedings. We're yeah. about winning the next possession." Yeah, the next game. The next, you know, it's it's doing the things. You know, our our guys put so much you know, uh, premium on winning the game. And we all know winning is important, don't get me. But we got to do the things that, that uh, perpetuate winning, which is which is getting through ball screens, which is boxing out, which is getting a stop when you need to get a stop. You got an open shot, you got to be able to step up and knock it down. So the little things that, that there's so many of them in the game of basketball that you need to do that will result in wins. And and on the, on the flip side, you don't do those things, it results in losses. And look, you get what you earn. In this in this world, especially in competitive athletics, sure. and right now, look, we've got three losses in a row, and that's what we've earned. Now it's time to turn it around. All right, coach, have a good week and good luck this weekend. Thank you, head coach Dan Boyle. He and the Buffaloes played this weekend on Saturday in Salt Lake City versus the Utes. Coming up next, one of the guys you just mentioned, Evan Batty, is going to join us here in the Stampede. Terry, it's a sophomore McKinley Wright with his senior, and an alley up to Tyler Bay from McKinley Wright. Superman is in the five second differential. Launches a three. Rattles in for McKinley Wright. Stanford trying to get one last shot off before halftime. Now the Buffaloes nearly had to come back in Palo Alto, but ended up dropping uh, the second of the two games. In fact, lost both of them in the Bay Area last week. Those are images from Stanford, voice of the bus, Mark Johnson. Sophomore Evan Batty joining us here for a couple of minutes. A tough road trip for the Buffaloes. Kind of go Indeed. back and give us a thought or two about how things went or didn't go. Um, you know, we didn't you know, play to the best of our defensive abilities in that trip. And, um, you know, if we don't if we don't correct our problems, then teams are going to correct our problems for us. Yeah. They did. So. Yeah, that's exactly right. So the Buffaloes end up dropping three straight ball games. As you guys analyze this, and I know you do, very detailed analysis of what's gone down, do you find a, a common thread through the three losses? Um, yeah, the common thread is defense. Um, you know, I think we've scored – Pretty well. We scored enough for sure on sure. All, all three of those games, and um, you know, just you know, we have to get our our defensive identity has left us, and I don't know why. You know, it's uh, my job to figure out how to get it back. You know, that, that's interesting you say that because Scott and I were talking during the radio broadcast on Saturday in Palo Alto. This program in ten years, you've been here for for two or three now, three, yeah. has been built on yeah. defense and rebounding. It's been a cornerstone, an identity. It, it seems strange that's kind of dried up all of a sudden, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of backwards in the sense, um, you know, that's what we, that's what we do. That's what I've, um, I mean, me personally, that's what Coach Ball has instilled in my mind. Just defense, rebounding, that's you know, all you need to win a basketball game. So, um, I don't really, I'm not an offensive player. I, I just, sure. you know, grab rebounds and put them back in and, you know, all that stuff. But um, defensively, I, I, I really want to make my mark. On the ball game, so that's you know to to not have our uh, defense where we want it to be is kind of frustrating for me. You know, one thing you've been able to do as a young player in this, and you're in your third year, but second year on the court with yeah. this program, is become a team leader, uh, a vocal guy, yeah. an energy guy with this team. So you kind of take this personally, don't you? Yeah, um, like I said, um, defense is my my thing. So I don't know what I don't know what is the next step for us to get our defense identity back but um you know it's i'm gonna, I'm gonna have a good long week trying to find it you bet buffalo's uh, back in action this weekend this is their one game week as they play their travel partner utah on saturday in salt lake city real quickly here this past weekend we had the diversity summit here at the university of colorado and a great cu alum kate fagan was one of the headline speakers diversity and inclusion to me is just hearing stories of other people's lives that make you think about the world a little bit differently. And sometimes those are really personal stories. Sometimes they're personal stories that are within like an ecosystem that now you realize might affect 
certain people more than they affect you. Sometimes in good ways, sometimes in ways that makes it a struggle for certain people. 15 years ago, through to like five, six, seven years ago, doing work in the LGBT community and dealing with my own story and the struggles I had and the things I wish I had done differently and the ways I saw the environment had affected me, like that was crucial to the story I wanted to tell. When I got to ESPN, I started to see so much more intricately the ways in which like the grand ecosystem of sports media affected how we treated women and how we covered female athletes. A great event here at the University of Colorado as we continue with Evan Batty. The Buffaloes have dropped three in a row on the road against uh, Utah this weekend, Salt Lake uh, City. I was talking with you right before we went on. Y your mom amazes me the way she travels around and sees all yeah. of your ball games. Yeah. Does she have like one of those, uh, you know, Star Trek transporters, or how does that work? For, I mean, how does she get everywhere like that? <laughs> nah, she just have. She just <laughs> blessed to have um, put herself in an opportunity where she has a job that um, is really flexible hours and she can work from anywhere. And um, while she's getting her master's degree, no PhD degree at uh, wow. USC. Yeah, don't let her so, sell her now. Nah, PhD <laughs> at USC. So, I mean, she's she's incredible. Um, she hasn't been such a back 12 game yet. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I know how close you are to your mom, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But, but that's got to mean something to you in the oh, yeah. ball game. Even at this level where you can look up and, hey, there she is. Yeah, um, she said... So I never forget. She said, "You know, the CIA didn't let you play your senior year. NCAA didn't let you play your freshman year. Right. You had a stroke. You had a car accident. You had all these things that, you know, deterred you from playing basketball. I'm not going to miss a single moment." Awesome. Did, did you hear her dancing ability, by the way? Yes, she, I did. She's on Buff Vision all the time. Yes, I dance. did actually. I, I'm, a, I'm a really good dancer. <laughs> That needs to be an upcoming segment, I think, on the Stampede at some point in time. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Now, back to business here with basketball coming up. So, here we're talking about coming to the struggles of Buffs of Bad. You guys get together as a team and start talking about this and helping each other trying to figure it out? Yeah, that's the only way we can uh, fix it. That's the only way I know how to fix it is, sure. you know, hard work and practice and, uh, you know, just really getting back to the drawing board. Um, you know, that's, that's the old school, but that's the only way. Yeah, and you want to get this thing turned around, obviously, quickly. Been a long time. You saw Utah at the beginning of the Pac-12 yeah, season. Yeah. Now the last game. Give us a quick thought about meeting, meeting the Utes once again. Um, you know, the Utes are a different team on the road. They're 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 much better in that building. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, Timmy Allen is a is a heck of a player, and uh, Booth Booth Gotch is a heck of a player as well. So, um, it's it's, it's going to be it's going to be tough. You know, that's, that's all it is. All right. We'll get this thing turned around and get a win on Saturday. All right. Thank you. All right. Evan Batty, he and the Buffaloes take on the Utes in the regular season finale in Salt Lake City at the Husband Center. Coming up next, we're going to talk women's hoops with senior Quinessa Kalo Dell. Colorado finally gets what they were looking for. And now is the time to celebrate. Now you see the whole team celebrating. How many Buffaloes today are going to say, this one's for you, Q. Vanessa K. Lodo on her senior day. Well, that's the way you celebrate a senior day right there for Quinesa Kalo Del. Buffs knocked off a top 15 team in Arizona this past weekend. Uh, dropped a couple of tough ball games in Los Angeles against UCLA and USC voice of the bus, Mark Johnson. The aforementioned Q joining us here for a couple of minutes. That's the way you celebrate a senior day, right? That's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, for sure. It was for sure a memory. It was a good time, and we got the W against Arizona, which is a ranked team, so it was a really fun opportunity. How was that, that senior day festivities? You know, we, we talked with both Shane and Lucas about what they went through. Emotional for you? You had to hear family was here? Um, yeah, it was kind of, it was like bittersweet. Like, it was like a, like, wow, I really, like, it's been a long <laughs> four years, and I finally made it, but then it was also like time flies. Yeah. So, yeah. How do you reflect upon your time here at Colorado? Oh boy. Um, yeah, I would say just starting from my freshman year, I would say it was like a little bit rough, not like what I expected, but mm -hmm. I think as my senior year being here, I think it's helped me grown into the woman that I am today. So. Yeah. Well, what's the greatest lesson you learned about yourself? Hmm. I think just being dependent on myself mm -hmm. and just learning things probably the hard way. Right. Having the coaches tell me what I needed to do and what <laughs> not to do. <laughs> This, this journey as a student athlete is an interesting journey, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you come in here, you're wide-eyed, you're a freshman, you're thinking, I'm going to take over the world, and you get here, and, and life becomes very real. Yeah, yeah, you hit some adversity, you have good times, bad times, you see it all yeah. in the four years. What, what, is you gonna do, what are you going to do now that uh, you know, when basketball comes to an end for you? Uh, I 
have no idea yet. Uh, mm. My mind is all over the place. It's all about beauty school. It's all about law school. It's all about going back to school to get my business degree. So, yeah. I'm, really, I'm leaving school yet. and going right back to yeah. school then? Yeah. 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 So, who knows yet? Well, it was uh, mentioned that was a great day on senior days. The Buffs get a top 15 victory over Arizona. This team has been so close so many times this season. That, that was a big moment that day. Uh, yeah, for sure. I think it was good to be able to close on finally uh, winning against a top team. Mm -hmm. I think we've been very close with like Stanford and UCLA. So, uh, Bubble, let's get that nice win. And we'll talk a little bit about the games in Los Angeles last week. And of course, they're getting set to take off now for the Pac 12 Conference Tournament. But right now, we'll check in. The CU tennis team got a big victory over the Minnesota Golden Gophers last weekend. Hi, my name is Sophia, and I'm part of Colorado Tennis. And today we're playing Minnesota. Um, so yesterday, obviously, we were outside, so it was a little bit different conditions. It's different for everyone, of course. Um, but we definitely had trouble returning, and we just couldn't manage to make it go our way. But today, um, it was close again, but we really had to fight, and we managed to just push it over the line and clinch it. So It's going to be tough today. Like, all of our matches from here on in are so much tougher, so we all just need to be mentally prepared for that. I think physically we can do it, but mentally we just need to be there and ready and try. So as a freshman, um, I'm still getting to know everyone, but our friendships are so much stronger. Our relationship with Kai is really good on the court and off the court, and I think off the court seriously helps us in doubles um, and getting to know her, what to say, it's, it's helped us a lot. And yeah, I think we're coming together as a team and hopefully our support will all just help us play better. Congratulations to the CU tennis team with a big victory over Minnesota as we continue with Quinessa Kalo Doe from the CU women's basketball team. All right, take us back this last week. And in Los Angeles, uh, neither of those games went your guys' way. Uh, yeah, for sure. I think we could have done a lot better. I think we just weren't, I don't know, we just didn't have a good start, but mm -hmm. I think we won every other quarter, so I think it just shows that going into the Pac-12 tournament that we'll be able to do damage. Yeah, that tournament coming up this week in, in Las Vegas, obviously, uh, the 10 seed Buffaloes, uh, you got to play those same L.A. schools. The way this team, though, is played, I, I was saying with the J.R. Payne last week, we had on the radio show, and I said, I think the Buffs are going to be a tough out. This is kind of a new beginning. Heading into the postseason. Uh, yeah, for sure. Us being a young team, I mean, it just shows that the progress that we've made over the past couple of years and just being able to fight with the top rated teams. So. I, I think the scouting report study is going to be pretty easy. You just yeah. saw UCLA and USC. Yeah. And, and now you're going to jump in and potentially play the same two schools. Yeah, so it will be pretty easy to do some scouting. We'll have longer practices, but. Is hey, there? It's not your seat. You don't want this thing to end right now. You want to go there to Vegas and make some noise and get yourself uh, further in the postseason, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Coach Jay was just telling us how we want to make it till Sunday, so we plan on staying. How about being a senior from a leadership standpoint? How, how did you kind of approach that in your final season? Um, yeah, I feel like I just had to take the younger kids under my wing and be able to just tell them what Pac-12 was going to be like. Yeah, right. we were undefeated in preseason, but I think Pac-12 was just a different level of play, and you're going to be tired and exhausted around this time, so just being able to fight. Were you able to kind of pull that seniority card every once in a while and go, hey, listen, uh, I'm, I'm the kind of the ramrod around here. I've been around for four years. You guys, you young players, <laughs> got to listen to me. I feel like sometimes, but I feel like overall <laughs> we all respect each other, and everyone all has like right. a fair say. So. Right. Were you a vocal leader? Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. I think I grew into that my senior year. All right. Well, I tell you what, be a vocal leader this week in Las Vegas, all right? Thank you. All right, congratulations. Quinesa Kalo Doe, senior for the Colorado Buffaloes, as they get set for the Women's Pac-12 Conference Tournament in Las Vegas. Coming up next, we're going to talk some skiing just ahead of the NCAAs. Michaela Tommy is going to join us. Uh, there's some images of Michaela Tommy winning the uh, GS at Utah here in Park City just a couple of weeks ago. Voice of the bus, Mark Johnson, back in the stampede. Michaela Tommy just got back from RMISA, the regionals up in Bozeman, Montana. It's been quite a season for you, hasn't it? It has been, yeah. yeah. It's been really good. Um, a lot of consistency, and it's been really fun. Is that the key for, for somebody in, in your events is consistency at this level? Yeah, I think everyone in, in college, because it's a team sport kind of – you want to be consistent for your team and you learn to like, you know, make smarter decisions because racing can be very unpredictable. Sure. So you have to learn to win under pressure while also, you know, not making mistakes. The bus finished up third, by the way, in Bozeman, Montana this last week. Can you give us a little bit of a recap about the event? 
We started off really well. We had a really good uh, GS race, and the Nordics also had a good race. And um, it was a really close battle between Utah, DU, and CU. And going into the Solemn Day, we, we were looking really good. Unfortunately, we fell short by a few mm. points, but it's really very close, and we had a good meet. It, it was a season in which Utah kind of dominated much of the season, didn't they? Yeah, they were really strong in the Nordics and Alpine, and it just seemed like they they had like a lot of people who could win. So it was, yeah, it was pretty, they were pretty strong. You kind of feel though, as this year has gone on and, and how the buffs have gone, that maybe you guys are peaking at the right time? Oh yeah, I think we're definitely <laughs> peaking at the right well, time. Well, love the smile there, by the way. That was a silly question, Mark, of course we are. <laughs> yes, we are definitely coming together. Everyone's vibing and we're looking to peak next week. You know, you do something that so many people here in Colorado do, skiing, of course, but what we do and what you do are very different things. When you're on your game, what, what what's right? What do you feel? I mean, I guess everyone does these sports to stay, you know, in the moment and kind of uh, get lost in, like, yourself. Uh, I think at the highest level, those people are just very... Uh, focused and very invested in themselves. Yeah. In, in basketball, people, guys talk about being in a groove. Do you get in a groove when you ski? Yeah, we call it a flow. A flow, yeah. okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Does the flow feel good? Yeah, you flow down the hill like water. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've rolled down a hill. So I'm like boulders, no, never like water, though. You know, we talked about uh, the one half of the ski team. How about the Nordic side? You can be the analyst right now. Give us a little sense of the Nordic side of the game. Yeah, the Nordics are kind of our rock because for them it's more predictable what they will perform because they peak at certain times and right now it looks like they're really coming into shape. They just did super well in Bozeman this past weekend and it's the same track so hopefully they can do it again next week. Things change a little bit from a format in terms of the number of skiers you can bring for the NCAAs, doesn't it? How, how does that alter things? Yeah, there's only three maximum per gender per team so three Alpine, three Nordic girls, three Alpine, and three Nordic men and it's just it's less competitors for Alpine. That means probably smoother tracks. And for Nordic, I guess, I'm not sure if it really changes, but it's just better positions are available, I guess. All right. You know, we had uh, one of your teammates, Steph Flackenstein, on the show here a few weeks ago. She spoke glowingly about you. Do you guys kind of push each other a little bit? Yeah, we do. We've known each other for a while. We were good friends before we came here. And I'm really happy she came. It's been really fun to push each other and watch each other grow and she's been doing really well so it's good to see. Now you're a senior athletically from Canada. Yeah. How did you end up here? <sighs> good question. I think I just kind of like I don't know the wind blew me here <laughs> I guess. Um, but yeah it's been really fun and I'm so happy I did come here. Yeah. You're from Quebec? Yeah, exactly. Right? I speak French as well. All right. Do you really? Yeah. Uh, can you say go buffs in French? Allez buffs. Oh, there you go. Not too bad. It's a bilingual stampede yeah. <laughs> uh, this week. As we get several of the championships here in a week and a half. Best of luck. Thank you. All right. Michaela Tommy with the uh, CU ski team as they get set to go back to Bozeman, Montana for the NCAA championships. That'll put a wrap this week in the Bubble Day Stampede. I'm Voice of the Boss, Mark Johnson. We'll talk to you next time.